Um, that's just again demonstrating how those straight lines create that spiral pattern. This is uh, from what's called cymatics. Uh, cymatics is the study of vibrating different mediums. Could be water, or they use like a lycopodium powder. You could put it on a drum head or anything. You vibrate at a certain frequency. This was done using water, and it was obviously illuminated. Um, and they form coherent geometry, showing that sound creates geometry, creates form. And here you can see that diamond grain lattice that uh, we were showing on that torus structure. Again, all, all these different sound frequencies, but just like the snowflakes, just like everything else, these are polarized uh, hexagonally. There's another one, very clear. This is all from sound frequencies, making that perfect hexagon. All right, there you see the snowflakes, beehives, these are in my talk. So I'm not that far off in suggesting that these coils uh, could be fundamental to energy production. In fact, some of the largest energy projects in the world today are based on the same idea. It's simply a modification in the geometry. All right. So this is a picture from one of those really expensive ones. I think this was at Berkeley, maybe. I can't remember. Um, but they're moving the energy. So just if you don't know, what, what is a coil? What is an electrical coil? If you don't know, traditionally electrical coils, you have a, a core. You have a, like an iron core. And just in a simple one, you take a copper wire and you wrap it around, 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 around. And they say the more turns you have, the, the greater your output is. All right? So that's the basic concept of a coil. What we were able to do is get rid of the core altogether. You don't even need it. Uh, you can use less material, and this is, was confirmed originally by Hewlett Packard, but now it's gone into much uh, better confirmations, deeper confirmations. You can use less materials. In fact, the better and better our technology gets, you get rid of all the other parts. All the transistors, the resistors, the, the circuits are, are gradually being thrown away, and the, the more naked we get it, the better it seems to work. It's almost like one of those things where you just got to get out of the way. But this is showing an example. You know, they have the tokamak, uh, you know, they have a, in, in Madison a big toroidal fusion research project going on. But they're moving everything horizontally, which is not, which is a lot of friction. And friction is heat loss. It's discord. It's disharmony. It's like if you, if you walk by a light pole, you can hear the electricity, right? I mean, you can hear it. It's like, you know, and it's a... Uh, to me, it's a very discordant sound. And I've heard with my own ears people turn on these coils that we make, which hopefully I can show you some. Um, there's another DNA image. Uh, these coils, and the, the sound is much more harmonic. It's like, Ooh. you know, this really uh, kind of uh, coherent harmonic sound. And lo and behold, the energy amplifies to, in the words of a of a friend of mine who's a PhD in experimental physics who was looking at a simple LED light setup that we had and he said the physics of this is totally impossible. It's completely impossible to produce the outputs we're producing. Um, so these are just more detailed into the genetics, modeling uh, the quantum mechanics of DNA and how to use it. I won't go too far into that, but just some good images. And then here's more 3Ds that were finally done. Uh, this was probably about a year after I had made the discovery. We finally got somebody to contribute some 3D images that proved that my calculations were correct. Um, and these are just more showing uh, the different kind of patterns that you can get over these toruses. This one shows that pentagonal rotation. You can see that pentagon right here. Um, and that's a uh, very important sequence in plant growth, um, more of those. So I just wanted to show you some images that people have done so you can get an idea of what this thing is. Um, so where does this leave us? Uh, you know, there's so much to say about this. Since, since we put it out, uh, it was originally a, a very small group of people who even had any interest in this. Um, after my TED talk, it really went kind of viral, and that's where most of the people who've heard of me have found out about it from the TED talk. Um, since then, there have been some people who've come around and wanted to put this to the test and see what we could do with it. 
I'd be happy. Uh, I won't do it right this second because I don't want to hold everybody, but uh, if anybody's interested afterwards, we can pull up some of those videos and look at them. Um, you can, uh, if you want to write it down, uh, if you look on YouTube, uh, youtube.com backslash Daniel, D-A-N-I-E-L, Daniel Nunez, N-U-N-E-Z, Mind, M-I-N-D. So Daniel Nunez Mind, and that's my uh, buddy Daniel who's worked really closely with me um, in trying to design and develop uh, versions of these coils. And immediately, once we, even though I still believe all the coils are primitive and there are, and none of this has been funded, it's all been done in people's bedrooms with very primitive setups of primitive little batteries and and not really what it needs to be uh, a flying saucer or whatever people, you know, as far as people want to take it, um, which is where we get into the high voltage applications and things like that. But uh, Daniel really did some brilliant work and he started applying sound frequencies to these coils and he's now producing hundreds of times of the output that should be possible. And there's no explanation for it. In fact, a lot of times the meters don't even read it. But you can continue to hook light bulbs up to these things, and you can light up your whole room, you can light up your office, and they'll off a very simple copper coil uh, setup. And so we hope to be releasing that at some point soon in the future, uh, but you can watch um, a lot of this progress on YouTube. Sometimes some of the videos to the average person, you might not even know what's the big deal, he's just lighting a light panel with a battery. Um, but I promise you, as, as some people here have, and, and I have, if you take it to somebody who knows what they're looking at, they will tell you that it's impossible. <laughs> so, um, yes, sir. Can we get your website? Yes, sir. My website is uh, www.theabhakingdom, that's T-H-E-A-B-H-A, -A kingdom, K-I-N-G-D-O-M, theabhakingdom.com. At least that's my website for right now, and uh, I haven't updated it in years uh, because I don't have any help on this. But uh, but there is still some some decent information, and the, the old videos are up there. There's been so much progress since anything's really been posted on my part. This will probably be one of the first videos to go up in years. Um, I know a lot of people are wondering what's going on. Uh, we've made huge mathematical breakthroughs. I was able to use this system to figure out how to predict all prime numbers, which is uh, a huge, I mean, you're talking about stock market, you're talking about encryption, you're talking about anything to do with any of that, being able to generate, predict prime numbers, uh, which there's thought to really be no pattern to, um, was a, a remarkable discovery that came through with this. Um, and beyond that, I've learned how to do much more with them to take, uh, and I, this will go into probably what's more the, the boring math side to some people, but you can actually, uh, here's one actually where I was showing uh, the geometries, how they line up. So you can see clearly this geometry. What this is doing, these spiral patterns here, are following the exact locations of where these emanations are intersecting the matter. And so when you ask about uh, Fibonacci, it's very closely related to these spirals that occur over the surface. And you can see a perfect example of that pattern right there, uh, which was dubbed the Eye of God. Uh, I think it, it went around uh, the email around, but this was a picture of a supernova uh, taken. And again, uh, you can see that pattern right there very clearly. So it's really demonstrating uh, the geometry of space. Here's some of the coils, pictures of some of the coils you can see. That was uh, my friend Jack's original setup, uh, and he did a, a motor that went 21,000 RPMs with an ounce of copper, which was a pretty impressive result. Um, uh, let's see, yeah, so this is where you can get into actually even working with other base systems, doing higher base calculations and making these matrices out of higher base systems. I've done it up as high as, uh, you know, 841, I think. Um, and uh, they, for computers, it's a, it's a vast uh, new realm of exploration. Uh, and uh, 
my friend John here is, is working on hopefully applying some of that to, to um, algorithms and computers and um, so that's a whole other realm and our, our goal really with this is you know I've had offers from uh, nature companies I've had really some great offers that probably have set my life up okay and given me the, the Iron Man lab or whatever but you know I knew that uh, I knew that pursuing that would mean uh, none of you would ever hear any of this um, and you know I'd be in that lab uh, alone or with a couple people who were working on with me and I would be heavily legally sanctioned from ever telling you anything um, and so you know it's a tough road because uh, you know there's not much money in uh, free lectures but uh, <laughs> the operative word is free I guess but um, but the truth is, this is what it's all about. We're trying to really find bigger and better ways to help people to understand and to give people access to this so that the, the geniuses of our world, like John, like uh, Daniel Nunez, um, all these guys really blow me out of the water, will be able to pursue their work and advance us and uh, take us to a whole new realm. Because ultimately, you know, spiritually we know that we're all one, everything is one, the universe is one. Uh, otherwise you wouldn't call it a universe, right? You'd call it something else. So just by its linguistic uh, parameters, it is one. Um, and uh, numbers are one. And the truth is, technology is about unification. Um, what you do on an Apple computer in 10 minutes now used to involve like a hundred different technologies. You know, you got calculators, you got typewriters, you've got, uh, you know, you've, you've got a phone, you've got video cameras, you've got everything in this one little package. And, and eventually, um, it'll go a lot further. It'll be our vehicle, it may even be our planet, um, it, it, it will be all of these things, a high fidelity sound system, whatever you want, all combined in a single technology. So that will never happen if it goes into increasing specialization owned by a private company. It will only happen if uh, we work together and spread it as a grassroots thing for, for everyone. And also, it's the, you know, if I'm the only one who knows about this, then uh, all it takes is, is one, one good shot and it's lost to the world. And uh, that's okay. I'm not. I'm not worried about that. I'm not scared of that. But what I'm, what I'm trying to do is to diffuse it, so that every, you know, because there's no point in trying to shoot at everybody. <laughs> um, and and it won't get lost even if you do. So we can't really control what happens. Um, but you know, I hope that. Um, we can continue to, to build on this, to learn about what it is that people care about, whether it's music or computers or energy. All of them are important, pressing needs of our age, and uh, we hope to be able to use this to, to benefit and further them. So it's been a miracle in my life to see it come as far as it has, from us drawing simple number patterns to people producing workable energy devices um, with no budget. You know, so we're, we don't even know what we're going to see when it's actually funded. And we hope eventually, um, I'm, I'm trying to work uh, with some people to actually develop a project where eventually I could have a lab, we can invite young inventors or, or old inventors or any kind of inventors who want to come and um, participate and share their technology with the world. And, uh, you know, the money aside really when we have that energy, when we have that knowledge and technology, it's not even necessary anymore. Um, because you could go live on the highest mountaintop and grow all your own food and, and produce your own energy. And uh, so it eliminates um, it eliminates a lot of those problems. So anyway, there's, I don't know what time it is or how long I've been going, but uh, where are we at right now? About nine o'clock. About nine, yeah. So I think I've probably said enough. <laughs> I could do this all night, you know, um, 